Welcome, tissue culture enthusiasts! In the past, I have shown you how to put plants into tissue culture to grow and multiply them, and today I want to show you how to take plants out of tissue culture and acclimate them to being in soil. If you're a longtime observer of the Plants in Jars cinematic universe, then you might be thinking, Laura, you already made this video. Yes. I did. But that video was ripe with cringe and general misinformation, and it has since been scrubbed from the internet, uploaded to a USB drive, and buried somewhere outside in my yard. So today I come to you as an older, wiser version of myself with darker hair to remake that video. This video is going to be split into three parts. In part one, I'll do a demo showing how to take plants out of tissue culture. In part two, I'll summarize how to care for your freshly acclimated plants for the first eight weeks of their lives. And in part three, I'll share some tips that have helped me in the past. To acclimate these plants, we are going to need a tray with a clear plastic lid, perlite, fluval stratum, distilled water, rooting hormone, fungicide, LED lights, and of course, some plants. Everything that I use in this video is going to be linked below. The only plants that I have micropropagated myself that are ready and rooted to come out of tissue culture are some African violets, which get absolutely no respect or clout in the greater plant community. So I decided that I would purchase some plants for the purpose of making this video. Someone on Discord recommended to me a seller called Orange Lake Nursery, which just happens to be based out of St. Pete, Florida. They had a really good selection of plants actually, and I was tempted to get the Mint Monstera, but I then opted to go with the more economical option, six Syngonium Pandas. Lately, I've been so feral for good marketing if a plant has any of the following words in the name, stardust, mermaid, panda, then I am inevitably going to purchase it. I can't control myself. Although I'm going to be working with syngoniums today, this process is going to be exactly the same for a philodendron, monstera, alocasia, or any similar tropical plant. When you receive the plants in the mail, you should promptly open the box and remove the jars that contain the plants, or the weird baggie if that's how the plants were shipped to you, like they were in this case. Don't open the jar or the bag that contains the actual plants yet. Once the container is open and the plants have been exposed to the air in your house, you can't reseal the container again and expect everything to be fine because the conditions are no longer sterile and the plants are going to get contaminated and die. So don't open the containers until you are absolutely ready to pot the plants. To make the media that I'm going to be planting these bad boys in, I mix 50% perlite and 50% fluval stratum. Fluval stratum is an aquarium substrate for aquatic plants, but a lot of people like to use it to root terrestrial plants as well. It's also somewhat expensive, so that is why I mix it with the perlite. I continue to fight my inner demons as I fill a tray with fluval stratum and perlite. I only have seven plants to take out of tissue culture today, so that is why the majority of the tray looks fairly empty. I pre-moisten the media with distilled water. I just dump the jug over the media like an absolute Neanderthal, but a more refined, modern individual would probably prefer to use a squirt bottle or perhaps even a watering can. Now that the media is prepared, we are ready to open the bag of tissue culture plants. I'm wearing gloves to do this process because I didn't grow these plants myself, and I'm not really sure what hormones or antibiotics could potentially be in the media, so I don't really want to touch it with my bare hands. Hormones in the actual media are probably going to be a very low concentration, so while it's unlikely that it would hurt you by touching it, I always think it's smart to just be extra cautious. I put all my little baby plants on a paper towel, and then I walk them over to the kitchen sink to rinse off all that goop aka tissue culture media. Once the plants have been rinsed, I take the plants back over to my work area and I add two drops of fungicide to a jar of water. I leave the plants in the diluted fungicide for five minutes and after that, I rinse each plant in a jar of water. At this point, they are ready to be planted. I use a pen or Sharpie to create holes for the plant roots to go into. 
I dip the roots and the bottom of each plant into a powdered rooting hormone and I carefully plant them in the substrate. If your tissue culture plant or plants don't have roots, that's perfectly fine. Just dip their rootless booties into the rooting hormone and the auxins will work their magic. Sometimes the roots of your plants will be growing in all sorts of funky directions, so just do your best to make sure that all the roots are covered. There are lots of different rooting hormones on the market to choose from. I'm just using a very cheap one that I purchased from Amazon. As a general life hack, if you buy 10 grams of IBA for $10, you can actually make $1,500 worth of rooting hormone by mixing it with cornstarch, and it will work just as well as the store-bought stuff. Once all of the plants are planted, I close up the container and that's it. I love these particular trays because they have a vent that you can open and close to start to slowly reduce the humidity inside the container. When plants are growing in a tissue culture vessel like this, the humidity is close to 100%. To help the plants acclimate once you take them out of tissue culture, you want to keep the humidity as close to 100% as possible for the first week or two, which we'll talk about in the next part of this video. I turn the vent so that it is completely closed, like I said, to keep that humidity up. The media is already moist, so I don't add any additional distilled water at this time. I place the plants under LED lights. The lights are on for 16 hours a day, and then they go off for 8 hours at night. I highly recommend using full-spectrum LED lights to grow tissue culture plants, whether they're plants actually in vitro like this, or plants that you're acclimating as they come out of tissue culture like we're doing in this video. Because we have a lid on the tray, we have basically created a miniature greenhouse. And if you were to just place this tray on a windowsill and use the sun as your main source of light, you would experience a phenomenon called the greenhouse effect, which would result in the tray of plants heating up super hot, possibly to over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, just by sitting on a windowsill in your house. So use LED lights instead of the sun. That was hard for me to say. So for the first two weeks, you don't want to do anything. Don't look at them too closely. Don't open the lid and start poking at the plants. Don't do anything. After two weeks, I twist open the vent to slightly reduce the humidity inside of the tray. If the substrate is starting to dry out at this point, you may need to add some additional distilled water. At week four, that is when I add fertilizer to the plants for the first time. For all of my tropical plants, I just use a cheap, balanced, inorganic fertilizer. These plants are super young and susceptible to fertilizer burn, so for the first few months of of using fertilizer on them, I would recommend diluting the fertilizer to quarter strength or less. If you happen to be acclimating a begonia, which everyone hates begonias for some reason except for me, but this is the best fertilizer for begonias ever. It is the Maxi plant fertilizer from California Carnivores. I'm not associated with them at all. I just think that this is such a good fertilizer. Highly recommend it. Sometime around week six, I would remove the humidity dome completely. Unless you're growing a plant that needs terrarium-like conditions, like a carnivorous plant or an orchid, for example. Once the humidity cover is removed, you can move the plants to a windowsill or outdoors, wherever their final destination might be. Around eight weeks is when I would typically transplant the baby plants to soil or whatever their permanent media is going to be. This is a semi-hydro inclusive space. This week by week summary of course depends on how the plants are doing at each step along the way. If the plants are still struggling by week six, then you might wanna leave them in higher humidity for longer instead of completely removing the lid from the tray. The more times you go through this process, the easier it gets. And for that reason, I would always recommend starting out with a cheap plant that you don't really care about instead of a super expensive plant that's going to be stressful. We are no stress living on the Plants in Jars channel. My first tip is that hardened off mature plants have a waxy cuticle on their leaves, but plants when they first come out of tissue culture don't have that. So it sometimes can cause excessive water loss, which results in the plants wilting. If your plants are wilting excessively despite having moist media, there is a product that you can spray on them called Wilt Stop that can help reduce water loss by basically coating the leaves with a waxy substance that keeps the water in the plant. 
I don't use it unless I have to, but I have found it helpful in the past to stop wilting. My second tip is that a lot of tissue culture acclimation guides will tell you to use a product called vitamin B1 to help reduce transplant shock. Vitamin B1 is literally snake oil and you should never buy it. It's not harmful to the plants, it's just scientifically proven to do absolutely nothing. Exhibit A, Exhibit B, and I had a third exhibit, but it was mysteriously taken off of the internet. I stand with the victims of big vitamin. Sometimes you'll take plants out of tissue culture and they just won't grow. And that might not be your fault. When a laboratory uses too high of a concentration of hormones throughout the micropropagation process, it can result in stunted growth of the plants once they are taken out of tissue culture. There's only one solution to this problem, and that is for you to learn how to do tissue culture yourself. Doing micropropagation at home is such a rewarding hobby, especially if you're someone like me who absolutely loves plants and has a big collection. It also has the potential to be a good side hustle. I have some videos on my channel about getting started, but I also wanted to let you know that plant cell technology offers both in-person and online tissue culture master classes. Their next in-person one is going to be a houseplant and carnivorous plants class September 23rd and 24th in Washington, DC. Just so you know, the next video that I post is going to be a micropropagation vlog. I'm planning to start posting two videos a month. One is going to be a more casual vlog and one is going to be more of a sit down educational video like this one. I'm also now on Instagram so make sure to follow me over on plants in jars underscore tissue culture for more micro propagation content. Thank you guys so much for watching. I genuinely appreciate the support so much. Bye!